Even what she said before, it's like you're here every week. It's like you're up moderating every week. So we give God the glory, we give him the praise. Are we feeling blessed today, saints? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed and you're coming in and you're going out? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Are we grateful to the Lord today? Amen. He put us to bed and he woke us up. The songwriter says, give him the glory, give him the praise. And that we have just come to glorify his name. Hallelujah. So those of you with the 10 string instrument, which is our hands, if you want to clap, oh, clap your hands, all your people as well, sing worshiping you, clap your hands. If you want to stomp your feet, if you want to rock to the left, to the right, you are in the right place. You're in a place where there is victory, where God breaks every chain, where God makes the way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you,
Because we got an all together God. Come on, praise now. the Lord. All together, yes. lovely, yes. all together, yes. worthy, yes. all together, yes. wonderful. Yes. What to God we say? Praise yes. the Lord. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There's something in the atmosphere yes. this morning. Yes. There's something yes. in the atmosphere. Yes. We come to worship yes. and I can feel the spirit of worship. Yes. Praise the Lord, and we're just going to continue. Yes, yes, we bless the name yes, of Jesus. I just stand to give the reading, and it's taken from St. Luke chapter 21, and I'll be reading from verse 25 through to verse 38. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I could ask those of you who can stand, if you could stand for the reading, please. Thank you. I'll also be reading from the New King James Version. Here beginneth, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Yes. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are ready budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Jesus. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves. Yes. Lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, mm. and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore, and pray always, mm. that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things mm. that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Mercy, Jesus. Thank you. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called Olivet, 28, 38 and last. Then early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. Praise the Thank Lord. Jesus. Here ended the reading of God's holy Hallelujah. word. And we know they're already blessed, yes. but we're going to say, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, word without the end. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. Come on, let's give God a praise. How many are ready for the word? How many are ready for the word? Amen. Without further ado, I will present to you Northern Pastor Andrew John, Congregation Pastor Andrew John. He has plenty of time today. 
Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I wonder if you all could understand something here today because, you know, whatever breath we have left in our body, we ought to give God the praise. Lord, um, that was equivalent to handing me a piece of paper to read to tell me something that's going on. However, bless the name of the Lord. We are here today and I'm saying every breath that we have, thank you very much, that we should be able to give God honor and praise Amen. every Amen. moment of our life. Yes. And that's why it's important that when we are giving God thanks, we mean it from the depths of our heart. Come on. And we are honoring God with our substance, honoring God with our um, innermost being, mm -hmm. so we can give God thanks. And we all do it in different ways. That's it. You know, everybody can do it in different fashions and different ways, but we know that our communication with God has to be on point. Come on. Because it's only God and yourself mm. that has to give an answer. Mm. True. Because the word, the word of God says what? We all have to work out our, our own, own, own salvation, salvation with, with fear and trembling. And trembling. Yes. So no matter how our next door neighbor put worships, mm. how they sing, how they pray, how they exhort, mm. how, they, how they do anything, it's ourselves we came into this earth alone mm. we shall depart alone that's right so we have to really realize these are serious times that's it. and we have to take heed of serious times bless the name of the lord greetings to our host pastor and beautiful wife uh, uh pastor bruce and and uh, mr val valerie well, she asked you here. Yes. And we bless God for your, your, your troops, your sons, your soldiers, the men of God who has come from yourselves. Uh, and greetings to the household of faith, all the ministers of the gospel, uh, elders of the church, uh, uh, stewards and so forth, and um, to my wife as well who's here. And uh, also my son who's here as well, he hasn't been here for a long time. Sounded good actually, not too bad, no? Not bad. <laughs> so we bless God for everyone here today. And uh, all those, those who are not here, we bless God for the, the streaming of the word to you out there who's partaking with us today. Bless the name of the Lord. We're gonna get into a word today um, and um, I'm hoping that this will register to you. This word came to me a few um, weeks ago, to be honest with you. A few weeks ago this word came to me and uh, was before even the passing of our um, head of state, Queen Elizabeth II, who we know is now passed and we know the country is in mourning. Uh, for one who has upheld the faith and uh, kept her integrity and uh, has really stood the test of time for 80 years and we are really grateful for her life mm -hmm. and for what um, position she held. Yeah. That's a very, very high position uh, to hold your integrity because you see, when you hold a position you have to portray the correct standing meaning basically that you have to show yourself in that position that you don't go overboard yeah mm -hmm. and we're going to get to that in a minute and you're going to see what i'm talking about you can't go overboard mm -hmm. because if you go overboard then you will be judged yeah mm -hmm. People are watching you in high positions. Mm -hmm. So the Queen couldn't go out raving. The Queen no. couldn't go out <laughs> doing all the things that your most regular people do. Your Queen couldn't go everywhere where our most regular people go. Mm -hmm. She couldn't do that. What was she doing she couldn't say particular things mm -hmm. because it would be headline news. Mm -hmm. 
so she had to keep herself in a way that she kept her standard high yeah and so that's why we can boldly say that she upheld her position upheld the faith she stood the test of time at a very young age to do that for so many years mm. takes a lot yeah. there's a lot of us and i will say this right now as ministers that hasn't lasted that long before falling mm. and doing something that you know the world is going to pick up on you know so to hold that position at the age i believe of 21 or 22 um to right up until this day and age that is commendable yeah um because some don't last a year mm. being that, in that position so we now we have a prince who's now become a king we pray that he will be able to do the same um i say no more on that subject <laughs> you know <laughs> but we pray for the blessings uh for her uh laying down to rest tomorrow and we um we we stand in lines of mourning where that is concerned um i know we all have our views uh, but remember she was the mother she is a woman She's a sister, she's a daughter, she's an auntie, she's a grandmother, mm -hmm. a great grandmother, mm -hmm. and just think of it as if it was yours. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we have to look at life, and I will get to that as well. And so we will um, wrap this up as much as we possibly can. Bless the name of the Lord. So please, um, if you can, stay in tune with the word today. It's gonna be a bit punchy but we're gonna get there. Luke chapter 21. And uh, thank you, Sister Babs, for reading that so nicely. Amen. And I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, but we're gonna have a look at this word and I think I'm going to just jump to my key verse and then jump back into the other verses. Um, Yeah, I'm going to, maybe, I'm going to hear a couple of verses here so that we can go through. So Luke chapter 21, as we heard already, there were so many different things that happens in life. And the topic that we're talking about today is the word suddenly. 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 <coughs> suddenly. And uh, with that, we understand suddenly means something unexpected. Something that you cannot avoid something that will happen to you now and there's no debate it will just happen things that happen suddenly and when things happen to us suddenly we need to realize that we need to in ourselves be prepared come on be prepared for whatever happens suddenly and i know we can't be prepared for everything because something, when something happens suddenly it just happens but we need to condition ourselves we need to have a mindset that if something should happen yeah. how are we going to act come on how are we going to respond how are we going to digest and there's many things that can happen to us suddenly in our life that we are not prepared for but God says in his word that we can be prepared for anything that should happen, even the most mm. deepest of things. Mm. And let's have a look at that now. So we looked at the scripture and it spoke about the different things that happen, that's going to happen in the heavens and in the earth. We heard that um, in the, the, it even goes back even further to say, woe unto those who have child at mm. certain points in time. Um, so let's just go through. So it says that there will be a falling away. There'll be signs that will be happening in the earth. There's signs in the sun, signs in the moon, signs in the stars. There are gonna be signs in verse 25, that's right. There's gonna be signs all over the place. And we don't know that it's going to happen because it can happen suddenly. 
we can look up you know the other day they had a uh, something shot across the skies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they said it was a shooting star but they don't even know if it was a shooting star they said it might be debris that came off a satellite mm -hmm. or it could be anything but they had so many angles of video uh, footage mm -hmm. that they can't deny that something happened in the heavenlies mm -hmm. but it happened without warning we didn't know they couldn't predict it it was suddenly so the bible says here that there's something going to happen in the moon in the sun in the stars it's, there's going to be distress on the earth the earth is going to be distressed we've seen that already haven't we we've seen the um the different climates changing we've seen earthquakes happen we've seen storms happen we've seen summers just go beyond we've had um what do you call um they call it wildfires in in um, certain countries where they have wildfires but we had a taste of that over here why because the sun was so hot it was burning up fields and houses got burned down suddenly all of a sudden somebody's house got demolished all of their goods were gone suddenly let's move on and these are signs watch this and the seas and so forth then it goes on and says men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the for the powers of heaven shall be shaken you're going to try to protect those things on the earth you're going to try and hold on to your possessions you're going to try and look onto those things because they are perilous times which are coming they are serious times that are coming i'm prepared watch this and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory are we ready for that i don't know i don't know if we're really ready we're going to see how ready we are watch this and when these things begin to come to pass then what look up and lift up your heads for what your redemption draweth nigh in other words it is near yes yes we've seen things happening around us oh yes mm -hmm. we've experienced different situations yes. taking place Come on. evident mm -hmm. that something isn't quite right true, true. but something yeah. is happening you can feel it. Mm -hmm. but are we looking up oh holy spirit mm -hmm. are we saying to ourselves what jesus says that when these things happen then look up and lift up your heads for the coming of the Lord to take his people unto himself that's redemption I'm going to redeem you you are mine I'm bringing you back unto myself it's drawing very near okay let's move on then he used this parable and I like the way he used his parable and um, puts it in a nutshell I'll, I'll, I'll synopsize the whole thing he's basically saying that when you see a fig tree and all the trees when you see things planted around you mm -hmm. if you know how plants grow you know that there's a season for everything is that correct yeah, yeah. when you've got um, in, in in the Caribbean you've got bananas and so forth they only come at particular seasons yeah mango particular yeah, season, seasons season, yeah. if you're from the Caribbean you know anyone know about tree tree the little yes. fishes you know the little the fishes, fishes? Chichi Ra. Chichi cake. Chichi cake. Yeah. Chichi cake. It comes at a certain season. For those of you who don't really know them kind of things, I'll just say like and you this is a tiny little fish swim, swim down the river. And then you catch it. Yes. And then you just make it into what you want to make it. Yes. Chichi. Nice. Tiny little fish. All you're seeing is loads of eyes looking at you when you're eating. <laughs> They're not alive, sir. <laughs> they not alive. <laughs> They're not alive. <laughs> but they look like they're alive because they've got all eyes looking at you as you go to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of little eyes. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a season when it happens. Yeah. 
it doesn't happen all year round. Yeah. Over here, you may have strawberries. Strawberries only come at a certain Certainly time. You have yeah. cherries uh, yeah. that only come at a certain time. Right, but if you are someone who knows about that, you know when it's coming. Yeah. Mm. So you're prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Jesus used the analogy of the fig tree and all other trees. That's what he says right here in 27. And there shall be, not sorry, in, in verse 29, he says, but behold the fig tree and all the trees. Mm. And then he says that then when they shoot, you see how they are, you know when they're coming, you know when summer is around the corner. Oh, that's it, that's it. And likewise he says, how we ought to be with the coming oh. of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Things oh, that yeah. come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Jesus, help us Lord. We can all talk it and say, you know what, boy, the, the, the signs of the times, mm. you know, the, Jesus is coming. And so we can say in a cliche, yes. but for real, yes. it's coming closer than we ever think. Amen. And we can look through the generations and we can say, well, that happened in that generation. They could have said the same thing. But we're saying it now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're seeing things happen more than ever before. Things, Watch this. So likewise, we should um, see these things or do these things. Know that the kingdom is at hand. But watch this. He says, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Yeah. There must be a fulfillment. Mm. But watch this. It says, heaven and I earth shall pass away but my word well, by no means. shall not pass away in other words what jesus has said mm, it's concrete yeah it's it's solid yeah it's concrete it's yeah. sure yeah. Yeah. it's going to happen it's yeah. everlasting yeah. it's going to be done yeah no shape there's no examining no, no one can come no. out and say well say you know maybe or well it, it may we look at it in this way no 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 plain and simple yeah. this generation will pass away but my word mm. the words that i have spoken to you mm. the words i have declared to you mm. will not fade away it will not disappear it will be fulfilled. Mm. We're getting to the meat now. It says, Take heed to yourselves, Let your hearts be weighed down. lest at any time mm. Mm. your hearts be overcharged. Okay. I want you to underline that word uh, overcharge. I want you to really hold on to that word. And New King James says weighed down. Hold on to that word. What does it say up here? Weighed down. Weighed down. Weighed down. Where, where is weighed it? Weighed down. 34. 34? Yeah. Lest your hearts be, be weighed down. Overcharged. In the King James it says overcharged. Over just to eat. Yes. Yeah. Listen carefully. Overcharged. Hold on to that word. Mm. Hold on to that word. Okay. So I'm going to show you how it go less <laughs> your heart be overcharged with um suffating is that the word suffating so it's, got it's got carousing there which is what it means we're going to open up that word Drinking party. Mm. <laughs> hey, hey, Lord, them word there. <laughs> hey, right, okay, right. It says suffiting or suffating or carousing yeah. and drunkenness. Oh Another one. Mm. And. <laughs> 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 Pastor, behave. <laughs> and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that they come upon you unawares or comes upon you unexpectedly or comes upon you suddenly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay 
let's take a little bit of time with this. So, it says to take heed. In other words, observe. Pay attention. Look at this. Make sure you understand. Take heed. You know when you was younger and your, and your parents used to say, Take heed! <laughs> when they used to say to you, you need to take heed. Means listen. Listen good and make sure it digests. Because I'm only going to tell you this once. Yeah, it's true. Just once. Remember when your parents did, I know it's not the same now, but remember when your parents used to teach you how to read? Mm -hmm. We used to have a book called Peter and Jane. Mm -hmm. Peter, Peter and Jane. Jane, yes. And when my mum was teaching us to read Peter and Jane, you know it's just got one page, it's, like, it's about four or five words, big. <laughs> so you used to say things like, Peter and Jane went. Read it. Yes, mummy. Peter. Um. Uh, uh, um. Peter. Uh, uh, Peter and. It says, Peter and James went. Read it. All right, mummy. Peter and James. James. I mean Jane. <laughs> Getting politically politically correct now, don't I? <laughs> I didn't mean that, but yeah. Peter and <laughs> Peter James. <laughs> oh my days, right. Oh, take take. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Peter and Jane <laughs> went. Yes, mummy. Start again. Peter and Jane. Then you know, slippers coming off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not slipper, it's a wedding belt. <laughs> Many belt. For then fear come from heaven on you. You're like, Lord, you better get this right. Take heed. Read it again. It's just one word and we're on the first page. It's still on there. I tell you, those were days where you sweat. But it says, take heed. To yourselves, yes. not but nobody else. To yourselves. To yourselves. Don't watch anybody else. To yourselves. Don't watch anyone. What they're drinking. That's what they're eating. To how they're yourself. dancing. Come how on. they're walking. How they're talking. Yes. Where they're going. Yes. Don't look at that. Take heed to who? Yourself. Yourself. Yes. Come on. True. Take heed to yourself. Mm. Less at any time mm. your hearts. Be overcharged. Oh, you know? Said to hold on to that word. Yeah. Overcharged. Yes, yes. It means that basically that your heart is so much in a place. Mm. Anxiety. Your anxiety, yes, your, 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 Easy, your happiness your, then. Yes, yes. Your overzealousness in the flesh mm. can be at a place where you know what, boy, I'm just going to go out party. I'm just going to go and do this. I'm just going to go and do that. Yeah. And so you're over, you're at a place where you're at your height, where you don't care. You're charged up. Not you're charged it. up. Mm. You're charged up. You know, when, you know when you get ready to go party? You know, anybody know that? Yeah. Oh, silent night. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, you know when, you know when, you know when you get your ready. To, you know you have to go to the cupboard three times to change. It's, oh no, that's not dancing material. I have to get something that I can move. Good. <laughs> the shoes not right. The top not right. The dress not right. Everything not right. So you have to go back and change again. You know you're set up and you're charged because you know why. Good music can play out tonight. <laughs> 
Because you're excited yeah. about what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, if mm -hmm. you check yourself, lest your, let your heart be overcharged mm -hmm. with carousing. Mm -hmm. Truck. Woo! Hello. <laughs> 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 with carousing, as, as Pastor says, from the party <laughs> drinking. <laughs> drinking that carousing could be anything it could yeah. be drinking it could be everything it could be eating it could be just dancing it could be just you with yeah, another sure. partner looking for partners to dance with all night mm. it happens yeah. Yeah. if one don't fit good you go to your next <laughs> <laughs> if that next one don't fit good you go to our next okay. That's what the dance hall is all about. That's what party is all about. That's what nightclub is all about. That's what it's all about. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not telling anybody don't do it because we said underline that main word there. To your side. Take heed lest your heart be what? Overweight or overcharged. It's when you're overcharged in something, you've got to question yourself. It's when you're so excited about a particular thing, you have to question yourself. Is it going to turn you silly? Mm -hmm. And that's what he's saying. Is these things going to turn you silly to the point that you have to be overcharged in these areas so that you can get your fulfillment? He says, watch out lest that happens to you when you are overcharged or suffiting or corrosing in uh, the excitement of things over excitement and drunkenness they kept it separate drunkenness as well you got there and you drink as they say in the world drink yourself silly you can't walk straight, mm -hmm. you can't talk straight, <laughs> you can't think straight, you don't know where you are, you don't know where you are <laughs> and you start speak things, the truth come out okay. when you're drunk. <laughs> that was in you. Yeah, okay. And everybody know your secret yes. and all your washing. Yes, yes. It's all exposed. Because it's exposed. Why? Because you're. Hey. <laughs> Good job you can't hear it right. Because your mouth will twist. You can't walk straight. You can't think straight. You can't talk straight. Good job he can't talk straight as I said. <laughs> but that's drunkenness. God says right here in his word, don't let it catch you. When you're deep and fired up for something in lines of those. And then it says, and the cares of this life. So we're not just talking about drunkenness. We're not talking about you being heavy into no. something. We're also talking about the cares of this life. Situation that will arise all manner of things. Yeah, come on. Are you gonna allow these things to take over? When there's a time, he's saying, "Look up, yes, because I am coming soon. I'm showing you the signs." That's taking place in this world today, and I yeah. wonder if you're gonna see it when you're wrapped up in your situation. Mm. The cares of this life, or the anxieties mm -hmm. of life. Are you gonna miss certain things because you can't get over your present situation? My Lord, so true. Will it take control? Yes. of all of what we do mm. will we miss God mm. because of the cares of this world mm -hmm. when he suddenly comes yes. <clears throat> that's why the Bible says that many of us we left behind mm. because we're so wrapped up in the cares of this world 
the anxieties. That's what the word cares mean. Anxieties. You know when the Bible says, cast your cares upon me for I care it for you. Cast your anxieties, cast your situations, cast your dilemmas on me. Because why? I care for you. For my yoke is easy and my burdens, they are light. Not yours, mine. I can handle them. So he says, cast all of them on me. In other words, when suddenness comes in your life, your cares, your anxieties, you need to know how to deal with it through me. Yeah. Amen. Through me. Mm -hmm. But don't allow yourself to be caught out. Because if you do, you're basically saying, I don't care. Mm. Let them come. I've seen it happen. I don't really care. Mm. But look what it says further on. And I'm going to get to something in a minute. It says, for as a sneer. Mm. Yes. Shall it come on all of them, or all them, that dwell on the face of the earth? Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. <laughs> Mm. that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. These things will come as a sneer. Mm. Now sneers are traps. Mm. So when the sneer is there, when it catches you suddenly, that's it. There's nothing you can do. You're not fast enough. Your reflexes are not quick enough to take your foot out of that snare or to come out of that trap. You're not quick enough. We are not quick enough. So a sneer means that he uses an example here. This thing will come on us in an instant. We can't avoid it. It will happen. But if we're prepared, we'll be okay. Because he says that we ought to be watchful with these things. But it will come on the earth in this kind of way. Watch this. I like what this says. It says in verse 36, it says, Watch ye therefore and do what? Pray always. Pray always. Yeah. Do what? Pray always. Pray always. Always. All ways. Come on. It's not divided word saying all and then in other words say ways One word. in other words different ways it says always in, in other words consistently how do we consistently pray how we consistently in tune how we consistently calling upon the name of the Lord listen you see each of us here can put our hands up and we can say I don't consistently pray I don't care how many times you pray a day you're not consistently praying in the light of how we look at consistently praying he never said morning no. afternoon no, pray evening no. night he didn't say that with david david says in the morning in the afternoon and in the night morning and night morning and night morning and night mm. that isn't consistently praying mm. let me tell you what consistently praying is consistently praying is when you are linked up lined up with god on a daily basis Amen. even when you're walking Come on. talking yes. you're at work yes. you're at play yeah. you're at swimming mm -hmm. you're at exercise mm -hmm. you're, you're 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 at church you're not at church you're you're walking uh doing your, your, your prayer walk and whatever you are consistently the bible says pray in the spirit always mm -hmm. there's certain seasons and moments for prayer but he says to pray always You've got to be walking, praying. Your spirit ought to be praying. There's a song that says, Lord, give me a what? Praying spirit. You need to be able to be praying each and every moment of your day. Why? Your spirit needs to be active in God. 
Oh, merciful Father. I see someone's looking at me like, no, nah, Pastor, you got that wrong. I haven't got it wrong because it says here, Jesus said it. I never said it. Paul never said it. Moses never said it. It was nobody else. It's printed in red here. I don't know. It's not red there, but it's printed in red here. It says here, pray always. He never said any time. But there's elevations of prayer. There's devotions of prayer. There's times you can pray. As a devotion. But when your spirit is in line with God, you ought to be praying always. You can't come out and say, I'm at work, and Jesus is coming and saying, well, Lord, this is not my prayer time. Why would you come at this time? No. You have to be ready. Yeah. Ready in the darkest hour. Ready when it's all going great. Ready when things are good or bad. You've got to be ready. So he says, pray always that you be what? Accounted. Worthy. To what? Escape. Your morning prayer is not going to be suffice enough till you get to the evening. True. Mm. Your life has to elevate prayer. Mm. Prayer means you're talking to God. Mm. You're in communication with God. You know what Jesus said? I can't do nothing except the Father tell me. In other words, I'm in direct communication with God. The Bible says that our steps have been what? Ordered by the Lord. That means you're consistently in God. You don't dip in and dip out. Like the party, mm. you don't say right. I, I'm in. The, I'm. I'm. I'm holy today, but I'm not holy tonight because it's party time. <laughs> no, even in the party, you still have to be close to God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Look what happened at the at, at, at the um the, the event that we went with Jason Bourne to sing. Yeah. And someone had what a seizure right there. Mm. What happened? The man said, "If they're praying, people in the house, right there in his time and the moment of concert, so to speak." Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Right there. If you're saved and you're unsaved, Safe you're believer, you're unbeliever. Mm. We're gonna say now, oh, well, well, well no, I'm not ready because I'm ready to party. No, no, no. You have to kick in. Mm. Start to pray. You never know when that time is coming. Mm. And let me wrap up on this because of because we want to do something now. The reason why this word came to me is because you never know when suddenly anything's going to happen to you or I in life. Live good with your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Live good with your friends. Yes. Live good with your husband. Yes. Live good with your wife. Yes. Live good with your children. Mm -hmm. Live good with your parents. Yes. Live good. Because mm, you never know when suddenly <laughs> something happens and if that suddenly happens and you don't have a chance yeah. to say sorry yeah. you're going to live with that for the rest of your living days some things have happened to us already and we just can't we can't, we can't turn back the clock but let's look at the now. Yes. Forgive yourself and ask God to just clean your heart. Yes. That's it. Okay. Deal with you now. Because yeah. I'm telling you this. You don't want to go around having bad feelings towards another. And when that person passed, you think you said, well, I wish I had said. Mm. I, I wish I had done. Mm. When I had the chance. Yes. Clear yourself. Clear yourself. Amen. Because suddenly something could happen. You could end up in hospital. Yes. Right there on a the hospital bed, and you never even knew you were going there. And you never made peace with that individual. Now they're on a bed and they can't even talk back to you. 
suddenly can happen. But get your house in order because this is high time. And Jesus is coming soon. We may not live to see that great appearance. We may go on to the other side, but live good with your neighbor and all around you on this planet Earth. Do it right. Do it right so that God can have full praise in your life. Can I just leave one scripture with you? It's Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Where is it? Okay, you got that? No? Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, you wait for the verse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was ahead of me, you see? Oh, no. Okay, all right, here we go. All right. Because I'm old school, I'm looking through my Bible. Right, okay, Ecclesiastes yeah. chapter 3. Okay, verse 20. 20 down to 22. And I leave this and we close. Maybe we can read it in this version that's going to come up here rather than the version I'm going to read. So it looks a little bit clearer to us. Shall I start reading? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. One minute. One minute. Chapter. The reason why I'm reading this purpose the scripture for everyone is that don't judge anyone. True. Say it again. Don't judge anyone. Don't judge anyone. You have no right in lines of their final say. The Bible says that we are judges. It's given us the power to judge. However, in lines of us trying to finalize someone's life when they cross over, yeah. we've got no say. Watch this. And before this, he's speaking about animals and he's speaking about humans. So, watch. And all go to one place. All are from the dust and all return to the dust. Watch this. Who knows the spirit of the sons of men which goes, go, go, which goes upward and the spirit of an animal which goes down to the earth? Who knows that? We, we can't say what we know. Anyway, watch this. So I perceive that nothing is better than that a man should rejoice in what? In his own work. In his own work so that his heritage, oh sorry, for that is his heritage. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? In other words, you have no say. When somebody passes this life, you don't know where they're going. Everyone will face heaven. Yeah. I say it again, everyone will face heaven, but it's what capacity we're mm -hmm. talking about. But heaven is the final judgment place. The righteous, the Bible says in that same chapter, the righteous and the unrighteous will be in where? One place before God. So however they appear, in the spiritual realm, in heaven, you may not recognize them, but you might recognize their spirit. However, everyone is going to that one place and we don't know who's going. We don't. As they say, we will be shocked to see who there. Because even the righteous, even the righteous, can be fooled. Yeah. Amen. Can we just pray and hand it straight back over to the pastor?
blessed the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you once again. You said that suddenly things can happen to us. And I pray that we're not in a position where we are caught unawares to the point we have no idea what to do. But if we hide ourselves in you, we understand that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. If we could just understand that our life is in your hands and no matter how we look at life, we know that there's gonna be different things that will happen. But Father, help us not to be overindulged to the point that we don't know ourselves, to the point that we're caught up with the cares of this life, so that we don't even remember you in it all. I pray that we will turn our life around. I pray that we will ask you to make a difference in our life. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that you will help us to have the right concept to life, the right attitude towards circumstances and that your spirit, Hallelujah. your presence will be there for us no matter what takes place. Help us this day that the times are winding up. Help us to look up. Help us to lift up our heads. Help us to know that our redemption is drawing nigh. Touch our lives this day as we give you thanks. In Jesus name we pray. Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, let's give God a praise. 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 Amen. Before we uh, go into the communion, amen. Uh, is anyone here who may require prayer? You might not be well and require prayer. I'm going to give you that opportunity. Amen. We're going to pray also for um, Sister Hardy, who is not well. Um, we remember those who are sick for my sister Pamela. Uh, we're going to pray for them. So if there's anyone that needs prayer, amen, as the the preacher say sometimes things can happen to you suddenly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Monday I was fine, and Sunday during the night I was ill. It came on me suddenly, and sometimes things come on us suddenly. And it's the ones that you know uh, when they come on you suddenly, they say in boxing the punches that hurt you the most are the ones you didn't see coming. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some things come on you and you didn't see coming, and those are the ones that uh, hurt you the most, especially when you have things planned to do and suddenly something happens and you're thinking how am i going to do this how am i going to do that um and so we're going to pray and sometimes you do get anxious because you think to yourself um you know how am i going to do this i have a number of things sometimes i say to myself lord i have too many things that i have to do because when you come sick you think i haven't got time to be sick but you know sometimes if you don't take time to do the important things amen sickness will lay you up and you won't be able to do that so we're going to pray we're going to pray for all those who are sick. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we present Sister Hardy before you. God, you know what is wrong. You know what the problem is. You know what the diagnosis is. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. God, that whatever the issue, whatever the problem, that she will be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, because we know that you are a miracle working yeah, God Lord. and there is nothing too hard for you to do. Lord, I pray for my sister Pamela. God, Lord, who, amen, is still suffering, still not able to walk. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch her from the crown of her feet. I pray, God, that leg that is swollen up, God, that is, as, as, is not what it should be. God, I pray that you'll touch it right now, that you'll heal her right now, that every swelling will go down in the name of Jesus, and that strength will come back in the name of Jesus. Because we know that, God, you're a miracle-working God, and when we cry to you, when we holler to you, God, we know that you hear, 
and answer prayer. Yes. Lord, we know that when we cry to you that you will hear our cries. Lord, sometimes we cry to the Prime Minister and he don't hear our cry. Mm -hmm. Many people say, oh, uh, why should we feel sorry for the Queen? Because we were hungry and the Queen didn't hear our cries. But God, we know that you hear our cries. Mm -hmm. And so God, we thank you for today for the miracles that you're going to wrought in those lives of those who are sick yes. as we come before you and we place them before you. And we thank you for all those you have healed. In Jesus' name yes. we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to uh, quickly go through the communion. If you quickly turn your Bibles to um, 1 Corinthians um, chapter uh, 11. I'm going to be very quick with you, with you today. Amen. And we, we find there that um, Paul was speaking to the um, Corinthians brethren and he gave them an order and how you should take communion. And so I'm going to mostly read from verse 17 up to the end. Um, because this gives you the idea of who should take communion and who should not. He says, now I don't praise you as I give the following instructions because when you meet together, it does more harm than good. In fact, let me read from the King James Version. I'm reading from the Common English Version. So you're probably wondering what I'm reading. Amen. Let us read together so everybody understands the same thing. Amen. So I'll go back. I'll go read from the King James Version. Now, in giving these instructions, and this is a new King James Version. Now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you since you come together not for the better but for the worse for first of all when you come together the church i hear that there are divisions among you and in part i believe it for there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you therefore when you come together in one place it is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in, or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. Let me just briefly summarize those few verses. There Paul was, was saying to them that I've come to you, and while you're preparing to take communion, you're all divided against each other. There are factions, in other words, some are trying to see who's recognized and who's not recognized. And some are eating while others don't. He said some are even drunk. And so he says, can I praise you in this? He says, no. In other words, I can't tell you you've done well when you haven't done well. Because sometimes we have a, a thing nowadays where we know that somebody hasn't done well, but we tell them that they've done well when we know they haven't done well. And so, amen, we need to be honest. And Paul says, shall I praise you in this? He says, no, I can't praise you in this because there are too many things that is not right. Let's read on verse 23. It says, for I received from the Lord that which I del also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This too, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In other words, he said, every time you take this, you're publicizing my death, the fact that I died on the cross for you. Let us read on, because this is the important part. He says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body of, and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Let me just pause there at verse 28. Does it say let the pastor examine? No. Does it say let the deacon examine? No. Does it say let the sister examine? No. It says let a man examine himself. For he who eats, verse 29, for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. 
Watch verse 30. For this reason many are weak, sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Mm. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with this world. Mm. In other words, it's saying, if we would judge ourselves. You see, if I'm driving my car, and I see they, they put those signs up, say there's speed cameras. And if the speed limit is 30 miles an hour, and I put my foot down and do 60, the speed camera is going to judge me. Yeah. And when the speed camera judges me, guess what? Somebody's going to send me a fine in the post and some points on my license. Yes. Yeah. But if I didn't judge myself and regulate my speed, then somebody else wouldn't judge me. And so what the, the Lord is saying here in verse 31, he said, if we judge ourselves, then he would need to chasten us. Come on. And so he's saying, if we take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner, then guess what? He's going to chasten us. And he said, some are going to be sickly. Some are going to be weak among you. We heard the word that was preached there that God's word is everlasting. So what he says yesterday is still valid for today. Amen. So he's letting you know that if you take it in an unworthy manner, he says you're going to be chastened by the Lord. And then he goes and says, therefore my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. That's why we wait until everyone's half before we eat. But he said, if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. At least you come together for judgment and the rest I will set in order when I come. What he's saying is that the communion is not dinner. It's not dinner. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's saying if you're hungry, eat at home. Yes. The communion is, is a sacrament to remember his death on the cross of Calvary. And so he's saying it's not for, to come and say I'm hungry so some eating their dinner and think it's not a dinner. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a sacred sacrament and so we ought to take it with reverence. We're going to sing number two from our hymn books, Break Thou the Bread of Life, and then we will um, move from there. Break Thou the Bread of Life, dear Lord, to me, as Thou didst pray. Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread mm. as I do now ministering in his name and when he had given thanks he break it and said take eat this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup as I now do ministering in his name and when he had stopped saying this is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it, you do so in remembrance of me. At this time I'm going to ask Brother Keith to bless the bread and the wine. Praise God. Glory to God. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise, my God, for you're worthy to be praised. Father, I thank you for each and every one of us who are here this morning, this afternoon, yes. O oh God. Father, you know those of us who are going to be here, for it is you, Lord, who woke us up this morning. For we know breath of life comes from you and you alone, my God. Yes. So, Father, as we are about to partake, Lord, Father, we just give you thanks for the opportunity, Lord, to remember your great gift of love. My God, you know each and every one of us. You knew us even before we were in our mother's womb, my God. And sometimes because you know us, Father, individually, Lord, 
Father, you're aware sometimes we struggle with everyday life, with the circumstances of life, the things that burden us, oh God. So today, my God, as we come before we partake, Lord, as we examine ourselves, my God, we ask you to be merciful. Should we have sinned against you in heaven, Father, in our thoughts, in our words, in our behaviors, even the things we're not even conscious that we're doing, my God, we surrender ourselves before you this afternoon, my God. And we ask for forgiveness. We ask for mercy, my God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we ask you, oh God, to renew us and give us another touch. Oh my God, we know you're a faithful God. And Father, should we benefit from the benefits of this cup, Lord? Oh my God, we ask you, Father, to just touch us. You gave us your son, Jesus Christ. You allow him to die on the cross because of your unflinching love for him, because of your faithfulness, oh God. Father, we want to re receive the benefits of this cup, Lord, this afternoon, Lord. The healing that comes from this cup, Father. The peace that comes from this cup, Father. The comforting that comes from this cup, Father. The wisdom that comes from this cup, Father. For when all the good things come from you, my God. So, my God, we surrender all to you. We ask you to bless this bread and bless this wine, Father. And allow it to be beneficial to us, to our very spirits to our bodies, to our minds, Father. Bring us together, Father. Unite us as we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. 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 Um, verse number two has okay. um, to scripts the bread and the wine and hold it till we are ready. Break thou the bread of life, oh Lord, to me. That within my heart thy word may be more than each inward soul from self set free. Someone here today as they give 
to the Lord. You know, I'm just going to, something that's dropped in my spirit. Is there, is there anyone here that you know that through giving that you have a testimony that you can quickly, quickly share? Is, is there anyone that has a supernatural testimony? Don't be shy. Praise God that you know whether it was in this ministry, we know the church is one body, elsewhere where you know that God laid it upon your heart and you gave and God blessed you abundantly. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I, I'm going to just quickly share with you. I remember when I went to a conference, and this is going back to a few years ago, and it, it was one of them conferences, you know, they've got the teaching ministry and so forth, and I had £20 left in my card, and it wasn't in them days, they had like the card machine that we're blessed to have here. So I had £20 left in my, in my um, purse, and I'd already given um, in the afternoon of that day. And when it was the evening, I'd already made up my mind that I needed that for traveling, for traveling back to Ellsbury. Mm -hmm. And then as the minister was ministering, it's like the Lord convicted my heart mm -hmm. to give. And I didn't want to, you know, sometimes some people is comfortable when you give the 20 and ask for the 10. But because, you know, it's like at their ministries, you know, so I just gave the 20. And I'm like, there was no fear. Gave the last 20. And I just had to trust God, trust God, mm -hmm. you know, as I gave it, knowing that he would make the way. And as I gave that 20 when the ushers came and they picked up the offering there was a lady it was an Irish lady and that's why I love praise God it's not your nationality we are all one in Christ yes. and there's a lady next to me don't know I never met her before in my life and even as we was worshiping in the service receiving a preaching she tapped me and put something in my hand and then she whispered in my ears the Lord laid it in a lovely accent the Lord laid it upon my heart my sister 20 pounds Amen. Can you see the importance here of giving? Amen. You know, so I, I'm just here to encourage you. And even as we've always been taking place today, I completely forgot about it and it dropped back in my spirit. So I believe that God wants to challenge us sometimes, even with our giving. Praise God. Just knowing it's not just, praise God, as you're given to build up the body of Christ. This is for you, your family. Praise God. This is for breakthrough. This is for God just making a way in circumstances and situations that will arise in your life. Because sometimes it's easier to kind of like hold back. But I'm just here to testify in the name of Jesus. Once you give unto the Lord and you're cheerfully giving, watch and see how God will supply every one of your needs. Look at this scripture here, 2 Corinthians 9. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Amen. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Yes. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. Necessity. For God loves a what? Cheerful, Cheerful giver. giver. And that's why when it comes to the offering time, we should be happy, we should be lifted up, we should be joyful, praise God, knowing that even as we give unto the Lord, he blesses us and he supplies every one of our needs. Thank you, Jesus. Offering, offering plate is here. And even as we sing to the glory of God, it's amazing and what praises can do I believe thank you Jesus we're just going to trust God as we continue praise God to give him thanks
Let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you all the praise. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Mm, he woke us up this morning, Lord. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you. We recognize that you are the most high God. You are that glorious God and there's no other God but you. You created the heavens and the earth, Father. And you know each and every one of us, Father. Even before we were in the mother's womb, Lord, you knew us, Father. Thank Father, we thank you, Lord, for those of us, Lord, who got jobs, who are able to give in the basket today, Lord. And those of us who don't have, Father, we still give you thanks, Father. But we know there's a new season coming for us. So, Father, despite the situation of the world today, Father, despite the crises, Lord, despite the stress and the concerns, despite of the rumors of wars and the wars, Father, we know you are the most guy. We yes. know you are the I am. We know you on the highest throne. We know there's no other God but you. And yet you in control all the time. So, Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for the act, for the offering, Lord. Father, you know our intentions, Lord. You know our needs, Father. Yes. Father, your word said that you know what we need before we ask you, my God. So, Father, we surrender all situations, all circumstances before yes. you, Lord. And we ask you to take control, Father, to bless and multiply, extend, Father, for your purpose here and earth. We ask that in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, congregation, say amen.